Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. It's my pleasure to connect with you today. Today I'd like to talk about old weeds. I guess weeds could be considered new weeds also if they are the kind, you know, those dandelions that grow all green and pretty with the gorgeous yellow blooms. Oh yes, it's dandelion time here. As the spring opens up and the buds on the trees begin, I can see there's less gray and muted brown tones to the trees. And now there's green, that kind of lime green, that bright, vibrant green of new growth, which brings with it, for me, allergies. So you see those old weeds, that's where we begin today. I was digging out a bit of the flower beds in the front yard. I am not a gardener. I've never found joy in digging in the dirt. I know that will shock some of you who love the plants and the greenery. You see, I love the trees. I like nature very, very much, and I love and appreciate trees. But those little plants, those shrubs, even the flowers that are beautiful and gorgeous that I can admire in the neighbor's yards, I just don't find enjoyment in tending and taking care of the beds that they grow in. And so today, I found myself wanting to be outside as the temperature was creeping up to the middle to upper 60s, which is like a heat wave here in Minnesota in May, early May. And I found my feet in the dirt, my hands gloved, reaching in to clean out the shrubbery. There were lots of old vines, old weeds that were dead. Not new weeds, but old weeds left over from the fall last year that were coated by the snow in the winter, and they just lay there, taking up space underneath some of those old vined piles there was some new weeds some green grasses even that were growing some new growth to some of the shrubs also starting i found myself rather enjoying the clearing out oh yeah You bet. This Sunday morning coffee might be, we might be talking about releasing or clearing. And we do, I do find myself talking to you about that often, don't we? We do talk about that a bit because, you know, I talk about the cycles of the moon and how the full moon is great for releasement and clearing every single month. And the new moon is great for connecting, planting seeds, planting dreams, connecting to your wishes and your desires. And so it would make sense then that here in the springtime, we could embrace the same concept of the cycles of the seasons, even if where you're at doesn't change this dramatically like we do here in Minnesota. You and I, we can have this conversation once again in a different way, talking about old weeds. So my question for you is, as we begin this contemplation, is what old things do you have just covering up new growth? What old, thick, weedy-like, they're so crunchy, I have to say. It's so funny because I'm thinking about this. They're like crunchy, like when I step on them. (laughs) They're crunchy and they're hard to cut, like with the shears, the planting shears and things. They're hard to cut. They just aren't easy to let go and they're so thick and interwoven and they those old weeds they just hang on like tightly wound in patterns think about this like really feel this you have old weeds so do i we both do you and i both have old weeds and it might take some doing some time some care some attention and some hard work some dirty work with feet in the dirt 
hands gloved to protect from any thorns or spikes that might come through when you are pulling apart these weed-like patterns, these thick, gray, dead patterns. These are not serving you. There's not going to be new life on these vines. Oh, no, 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 there's not. And beneath them, there's some things that are hiding. And some of the things that are hiding are good things that you want more of. Abundance, prosperity, growth. And there are some not so good things, some things you would not choose some more weeds, some fresh new problems, some fresh new nemesis to thwart your path. I mean, truly, it's that simple. We are just like these flower beds. We need care. (laughs) You, You and I both need care. We might not be grand gardeners, but we are responsible, wholly responsible for the condition of what we are growing in. The whole concept, you've heard the term bloom where you're planted. We have the responsibility to ourselves to take care of the soil, to give ourselves the optimal conditions in which to grow. So the old relationship patterns must shift and change. If they're not serving you, you have learned. And I understand that you might be afraid for change. When you pull out and weed the garden and see what's beneath, you might feel like there's lack or scarcity or not sure about the value of what's beneath. But I assure you that rich, moisture-rich human soil that you have been set in to bloom is going to help you thrive. And it is indeed your choice and responsibility to pursue the passions and dreams and desires that you have. The wants and the needs also fulfilled in this same flower bed, in this same prepared soil. We need nurturing. We need loving. We need care. You need to provide that for yourself. You are responsible not to request other people to provide it to you or for you. But if indeed it's a relationship scenario or situation that comes to mind first, whether it be career and employees, employer, workplace, or significant other, lover, friend, family member, parent, child, sister, brother, whatever it might be, Just know that you are at the source core of this relationship and that there is indeed a collaborative dysfunction that is occurring. So by you accepting or rejecting that there is an issue or need to be tended to, you are not helping either one of the uh, components or the parties involved in the relationship or exchange. So you see this need to take care of yourself is essential for not only your benefit, but for the most important relationships of your life with your spouse, with your children, with your parents, with your, with your job, and, and underneath the rich, beautiful soil, the roots of you, the core of who you are, the relationship with yourself. I do not know what that looks like for you. I do not know the answers for the perfect life. Just add water, plant these seeds, and your soul will grow. No, no, no. Year after year, cycle after cycle, pattern after pattern, you must show up and clean out the flower beds. Clear room, make room in the soil for wake, make some room on the ground for you to grow and expand to invite new experiences into your life. You got to release some of the old, dead, gray, viney branches that are covering up this great spot in this flower bed for you to, to cultivate and create some new relationships, some new experiences, opportunities. Hello, there's abundance underneath that old crap. Let's clear it out. Roll up your sleeves. Get your hands dirty. And do the work. Do your work. Do your work. It's not a one and done kind of thing. You're going to have to come back. I'm going to have to come back and pull out some weeds in a couple of months from now and in a month from after that and a couple of weeks after that as the growing season gets faster and faster and and growth happens and development creates a momentum and the sun and the conditions become more optimal for growth. That means the good stuff's going to grow, but so too is some not so good stuff. 
there's going to be some weeds and I'm going to be in awareness and I'm going to tend to my needs and I'm going to weed the garden. You have to do that. How much overgrowth in your life have you put up with all this time, the past three years? Look back. If you don't feel good, you're probably shading your flower bed. You're probably covering up the places where you really want growth and you're making it harder for the good things to grow because they're covered up and suffocated by the old patterns, by the old voices in your head of other people telling you, your, your sixth grade teacher, that you can't write. You're not good enough at it writing. And here, your most beautiful dream and desire is to write. But you just can't bring yourself to do it because the weeds of that thick, old, gray mass of that one person that told you one time that one thing is still there, covering up the growth, the opportunity for you. <laughs> I'm not telling you this stuff to make you feel bad. I'm sharing this with you for perspective. You and I, it's time for us to grow. It's time for us to really let ourselves be what we need. What do you need? Do you need more light? Do you need more positive inputs, inspiring people in your life? Maybe it's even your favorite YouTuber or a great author or a pet. Receive the light in the ways in which it shows up for you and amplify it. Make it bigger. Make it awesome. What do you need? I'm thinking of the elements. So light and water. Water is about flow and water is connected to our hearts and our emotions. What does your heart need? To grow. Growth isn't, by the way, when I say the word growth, growing, abundance, prosperity, I'm not talking about hustle, work, motivate, go, drive, set your goals, do it, do it, do it. I'm not talking about hurry, hurry, rush, rush, do, do, task, task. When I talk about growth, I'm talking about spirit. I'm talking about expansion. I'm talking about freedom. The kind of freedom you call me and we talk in session about you desire freedom and you can have it. It's your choice It's your intuition and your spirit working together with your heart, allowing the energy of that element to flow, that water understanding, that emotional freedom that you desire. Be there for yourself. Let yourself free your emotions. You don't have to share everything with everybody, but share it with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Let the energy flow. Use your tools like writing. Write. Use your tools like movement. Dance. Listen to songs and music that align with the emotions that you have and let your emotions flow freely. Growth is about expansion, expanded room for you to be yourself. And you've got to be yourself with yourself first before you can be you fully in any relationship you're in, whether it be in a job, in a career, in a romantic relationship, in a partnership. We deserve this time now. We deserve uh, to understand that growth is about expansion and it's not about pushing. And hard work doesn't mean intensity. Hard work means showing up for yourself and letting yourself feel that is, you guys, listen to me right now. That is the hard work, letting yourself feel. Connect with the water energy vibration, with the heart, heart space and the heart chakra. Let your spirit rise up with the light like the sun in the solar energy area of your body, which is your spirit, which is your gut and your belly, and let it rise up to meet the heart and the water element and to work together with the flow of things. Now, I might, I know, I know right now as I'm talking to you, I'm talking at you and your brain is going, wait a minute, Bridget, I don't get this. Why are you bringing in elements and the the sun and the light and the water and the heart? What are you talking about? I'm talking about how nature Our human life gives us clues and information and tips on how to connect with energy within ourselves. Externally, we have clues. Mother Nature is giving us clues when it's time for clearing, when it's time to weed the old dead weeds, get them out so we can see what the new stuff is that's cropping up 
so we can discern and sort out what we want and what we don't want. We can make choices. We have responsibility to care for ourselves. And when we use the tools that God, universe, earth, consciousness has given to us through the elements like the sun, like the rain, like the water and the flow of hearing the river, of the ocean, of the babbling brook or the stream, those things are directly connected to our heart and our soul. And together, that relationship, that sacred relationship, is what will create the opportunity for growth and expansion for you. And in turn then, as you bloom where you are planted, you will then inspire others in through the relationships you have and the patterning that you are role modeling. You are just living your life by taking care of yourself, showing up for yourself, letting yourself have the emotions, having the feelings, having the good cries. <laughs> they're called good cries for a reason. And they're called ugly cries for a reason because they're not pretty. That's the hard work. This is the hard work is feeling your own feelings. That's the hard work. And guess what? What you're going to discover is probably very close to what I have discovered recently on a recent trip that I have taken. When I, I was by myself, I was solo traveling and I was focused on nature and the surroundings and just being, I realized that the stressors and the pressures and the anxiety that I feel most often <laughs> are not mine. They're not me stopping me. They're me as an empath connected through other humans throughout this collective human experience and relationships and expression. And I am feeling everybody else's stuff. And that the truth is, I am really a happy person. I have discovered this. I am really a really happy person. Like all the time, not just sometimes when I'm doing this with you and I'm sharing my videos and I'm in session. I'm not just only happy and finding joy and feeling amazing when I'm doing that, showing up and sharing in spirit. But I'm genuinely at my core as a human. I am a happy person. I like life. I appreciate nature. I do. And I love the elements. And I love the sunrises. Oh, I am so inspired by the sunlight. And I appreciate the smell of the rain. And the symbolism of this is the most beautiful messages I could ever receive. And I want, I want you to understand this, that for you, I know you are an empath. I know you're feeling other people's stuff. That's why you're drawn to me and my work. That's why you're listening to Sunday Morning Coffee, because you want the positive inspiration by working with a very real human topic like anxiety, like stress, like clearing, like old patterns. And I know this. That most of the stuff that you're feeling that's weighing you down is none of it's none of your stuff. It's nothing you ever really believed about yourself. It was that teacher's projection onto you. Or maybe a parent's. Or maybe a boyfriend. Or some mean girls in school. Or a boss. Whatever that voice was, it was never yours. So the feelings that you have are real. They are real. They are not meant to be stuffed or stifled. And the old weeds cover the feelings up. The feelings must be flowing like the water. They must be free to be felt by you. It is scary. I get it because I am scared to feel my feelings too because I feel like if I feel my feelings too much, I mean, I might go crazy. I might go crazy and cry for days. I might get so sad that I'm in bed for three days and I have things to do. Like I got four kids to take care of. I got a family to, to, to manage. I got a business to run. I got stuff to do. I got to show up for other people, right? Do you feel like that? Do you? Nod your head. Yes. Yes, Bridget. I feel exactly like that. If I start to feel, when am I going to stop? The point is, is this is about freedom for you. Give yourself the permission to feel. 
The anticipation and the resistance feels so much worse to you, I guarantee it, than the actual feelings itself. And if you are one of those people that's afraid of this avalanche or opening the floodgates of feelings, which I understand, I'm raising my hand. You can't see it because it's an audio. (laughs) I'm raising my hand. I feel that too. Get a counselor that you can talk to on a routine basis, once a week at first, and then maybe twice a month, and then maybe once a month, and then maybe every couple months, but get a counselor or someone that can help you sort things out. If you have major trauma in the past and you're afraid to open the floodgates to that and feel, 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 it's natural to be afraid to like be re-victimized or to re-feel the trauma, whatever it might be. Whatever the degree of that experience is or was to you, the fear of feeling the feelings in general that are layered upon layered upon layered upon layered that you've been collecting over your lifetime, I understand that fear. Believe me, I understand it. This is the work. This is the work. This is what it means to show up for yourself, to take care of yourself, to love yourself. This is what it means. This is what it means. It doesn't mean a massage and getting your nails done. It means this, the work, this. That means you have to get some support, whether a life coach or... Um, an online class that's going to give you positive inputs and connections to other people where you can talk about things, whether it's through a Facebook group or in small groups, etc., something like that, or with a counselor. And oftentimes employers will offer like a series of like four or five free counseling sessions to keep their employees' mental health up to, up to par. And oftentimes it's called EAP, Employee Assistance Program, and it's free. And sometimes on the back of your insurance card or your medical insurance card, there will be a helpline to call for mental help, mental health help to talk to somebody. So if you, your feelings do get overwhelming to you, you can call that number and talk to somebody. Like, hello, there are structures in place that have grown, that have come through growth and awareness for mental health, that it's a normal thing, just like physical health, just like getting a mammogram for us women every year. Mental health is a thing that's real. It's not something that happens when there's a problem. It's something that you, that there's already a support structure, a growth structure in place that you can tap into. Might be a life coach might be a best friend that's amazing, like that you can really trust, that's not going to give you advice and tell you what to do, but that's just going to listen. It might be starting with just your journal and talking to your dog. I'm not kidding you. Or your cat and just pouring your guts out to your cat or your dog. I'm not kidding you. Or inviting in an archangel or a spirit guide that you love to work with, like Archangel Michael or Archangel Raphael, and, and just sharing speaking out loud, letting it flow and loving yourself for it, for the showing up part. So, wow, this is deep. This is deep. We're digging deep into these weeds. (laughs) I'm proud of you for listening to this. This is not about pushing or efforting. This is about being your natural amazing self. Take a breath with me. Nice, deep breath. Nice, deep exhale. Big exhale. Come on. Relax into knowing that you are beautiful. You are a brilliant, vibrant light. And you are growing. And that's what you seek is connection to your own growth. So show up and start. Start to take care of yourself. Maybe start by clearing out some of those old weeds. I hope this helped to inspire your spirit, to fill you with some hope, and to empower you to live your life. Because this is your life after all. And you got to live it. Just live it. This is Bridget. 
Thank you so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I hope you're enjoying the videos that I share on Above Life channel on YouTube if you're interested in other positive inputs and intuitive support videos and such. You can follow me on my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel. You can also find me on social media on Instagram and Facebook at Bridget Inspired. Thanks for being here.